So I would quickly then welcome uh, my colleague, Anerim Mawere, uh, to, uh, to, to then give us <laughs> a background introduction of herself and what they are doing on the matter. So Karibu San. Um, good morning, colleagues, and thank you very much, Victor, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Nere Mawere. I am counsel for the first to eighth petitioners in this matter, as well as the 10th petitioner. And I work within an organization known as Kellen, the Kenyan Legal and Ethical Issues Network on HIV and AIDS. Um, as to borrow from the words of our president, we are in, in unprecedented times. And as a result of that, we do require a different way of working and a different way in interrogating how we work. And this is what this petition seeks to do, really question how information is being made available to persons, how information is, how information is being made available and what information is being available to ensure that we are able to guarantee both the life and health of Kenyans. As the coronavirus numbers are increasing daily, both in terms of deaths and um, active cases, we have to ask ourselves, do we have the necessary information both to prevent infection, to promote healthy behavior, social distancing and other restrictive measures that have been put in place and to prevent death eventually, which has happened to already over 160 people in this country. And these are some of the questions that this petition seeks to ask. What information must be available proactively? We're in a pandemic. What should the state have told us proactively without us having to ask? And if it's not provided proactively, what obligation does the state have to ensure that when you're asked for information, which we have done in a number of letters to the state as organizations and as individuals, that you must respond either within 48 hours or 21 days. If your country is in a pandemic and you fail to ask, provide the information necessary to ensure that the virus does not continue to spread, how then shall we be able to arrest it or seize it? Further, if citizens ask you for information that necessarily should be made available because we are paying our taxes, we have voted you into these positions, how should you react to the, those requests for information? So these are some of the questions that are being asked by my organizations and the first to eight petitioners. The first, second and third petitioners are community health workers and volunteers working in Kisumu, CIA and Mombasa County. Each of them consistently have questions from their citizens, from the residents within their counties on what they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to prevent to prevent infection, but also to access other health services. Mothers are staying at home because they're unable to access health services because they don't know if they can go to hospital or if they should stay at home. Children are not being vaccinated, both in Mombasa County and Nairobi County. And these are questions that are not being answered either by county or national government. The fourth to eighth petitioners were persons who are held in mandatory quarantine. Each of them had traveled back into the country. And upon arrival, they were told that they would be held in mandatory quarantine for 14 days with no other information. They didn't understand what the protocols were, when they would be tested, how they would pay for this quarantine, what would be made available to them when they were in quarantine, how they'd be provided for other health services if required. So they spent 14 to 28 days within quarantine facilities not knowing what was happening, not being given the information necessary to ensure that they were healthy and not also being told what it meant. Some of them were even held further and told it's because they didn't observe social distancing without the state having put in place protocols to guide social distancing within a quarantine facility. Such problems are necessitated because we are not providing citizens with information when they ask for it. The Kenya Legal and Ethical Issues Network on HIV and AIDS, as I mentioned before, is a right to health organization. So we work to promote and protect the right to health in this country. The right to health is threatened at this time. We're in a pandemic, yet we remain in a position whereby we do not have the necessary information for ourselves as an organization and also to provide people that we work with. We cannot tell you left to right how many ICU beds, as has been mentioned, that are available, how many healthcare workers have been trained, how many healthcare workers have been trusted, how many healthcare workers have necessary protective equipment? How many citizens have necessary protective equipment? How many commodities are available at this stage? We have a breakdown of large sums of money being received. We're unclear how this money is being spent towards protecting the health and lives of Kenyans. So we remain concerned that 10 years of, after our constitution, we've been given these aspirations and promises. We cannot go to the Commission for Administrative Justice to ask for information and get meaningful responses. We cannot go to the Ministry of Health to ask for information and get meaningful responses. We cannot keep drafting constitutional promises if we do not mean to, if we, don't mean, if we do not mean to meet them. So what we do have to ask is a court to determine and to decide what does it mean when we have this provision in our law? 
What is the obligation placed on the state, state agents and state ministries? And what is the role of the Commission of Administrative Justice to ensure that Article 35 is realized? Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Fanapen. 